Good morning. morning. Welcome. Welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church. Um, We extend our sympathies this morning to the family and the friends of Ruth Gustafson. Ruth passed away at home last Saturday. There will be a private service this Tuesday at Oakview uh, Oakview Cemetery. I wanted to extend a heartfelt thank you to all the brave folks who showed up yesterday to to finish, to, to pick up all the leaves and everything. I understand that the weather was in your favor. No wind, that always helps a lot. And uh, the pastor wasn't there, so there was even less wind. So there you go. Okay, and then also a, a big thanks to um, our fellowship committee and the amazing job they did with the Harvest Dinner. It was good to see all of the people there together, breaking bread together. So a special, special thanks to, to those two Groups. Okay, what I need to do, I wanted to invite Kathy Lane up. She had something to share with you. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Every year, about this time, I would get the angel tree out of storage. This is when I was working in the office. And Pastor O would always say, that's really a pathetic looking tree. But I would answer, just turn on the lights. Because to me, there is no, no tree that's ugly once the Christmas lights are on. Yesterday, as I hung all the angels on the tree, I couldn't help but think of all the angels that have been put on that tree over the years. And all the happiness those angels have brought because of the generosity. People like you, people that are members of St. Mark, who every year come together and make this a good project. This year, we are again supporting Big Family, a nonprofit agency that helps foster children. Our deadline this year is Sunday, November 26, about three weeks earlier than we thought it would be. So, um, this is kind of a rush project with the Angel Tree is up. Usually we don't put it up till after Thanksgiving, but it's up this Sunday. Um, We do have two delivery times. One where we'll deliver right after Thanksgiving, and then I told her we'd make another delivery on December 3rd, and she will go pick it up. A couple of things about what's on the list. The list is pretty self-explanatory, but um, there's one item that's for toys for children under two, and she made a point of saying it cannot say, you know, like on the box, it'll say for six months and up, one year and up. It cannot say three plus. It can say up to three, but it can't have three with the plus sign after it, or they can't use it for children under two. Um, the other thing to remember, if you uh, pick up the one that says a hat and mittens or hat and gloves set for the kids, um, look for sizes. I went into Target yesterday because I haven't bought this stuff in a while. Um, it'll say a T after the size, meaning toddler. Okay, so um, just make sure that you look for that and then um, you're buying up to age 10 and 11. The other ones, I believe, at least in Target, it ran 4 to 7 and then to 16. There's not a size for, for every age. But, but the toddler sizes are noted with after it. Um, the rest of it, the Legos, I broke up into ages. Um, the art, the artwork that they are, the um, jewelry making kits that they want, I also broke up into ages on the angels. So if you have any other questions, you can call Melissa in the office or Lisa in the office, and they can probably answer it, or you can call me at, on my cell phone. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Kathy. Obviously, this is a project near and dear to her heart, uh, to her heart, and to ours as well. This is our second year uh, supporting supporting Big Family. And last year, in addition to all the items that we provided, we were also able to give a sizable. We were blessed enough to be able to give a sizable financial gift to that organization as as well. Okay, not as an afterthought, I. 
left this to the end because I think it's very, very important. It is uh, Veterans Day weekend, and we approach this in different ways uh, over the course of the years, but today what I wanted to do simply was to invite people to stand to be acknowledged. If you served in the United States Navy, would you please stand? If you served in the United States Air Force, would you please stand? Navy uh, sailors keep standing. <laughs> Attention! <laughs> not, at, not at ease, Mr. Baker. I'm sure you heard that before. Okay. <laughs> United States Army. United States Marine Corps were presently serving, like Mr. Joseph Marino here, who is home on leave. Um, United States Coast Guard, often forgotten, the United States Merchant Marine. Pretty gutsy guys in World War II, I tell you. Um, all right. Well, we want to offer our, our heartfelt, our genuine thanks to you for your service to our nation. Thank you very much. You may be seated. We take this time now to prepare our hearts to worship.
trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As God's beloved daughters and sons, let us call to mind our need for reconciliation with God and one another. God of the nations, in we baptism you anoint us to be your holy people in the world. Yet, Yet we, we have, have not been faithful to you. We, we have, have not loved and accepted one another. We, we have, have not reached out to those who are poor, or hungry, or lost. Forgive us and fill us with your life, that we may delight in your goodness and serve you with joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Christ, the grace and mercy of God are revealed. In Christ, your sins are forgiven. Walk then as children of light. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Sunday after Pentecost. Our first reading is from Amos chapter 5. In the days of Amos, people thought that the day of the Lord would be a time of great victory. But Amos announced that it would be a day of darkness, not light. He said liturgy is no substitute for obedience. The Lord demands justice and righteousness in the community. And now the reading. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into a house and rested his hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings and well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We read Psalm 70 responsibly. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and come down Let those
Later, the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. A true story. A true story. Um, uh, some of you may have heard this before, but St. Mark, like most churches, is a dynamic place, and I'm certain, I'm certain that there are a lot of people who have never heard this story before. And it's a good one. And it actually relates to the text. Those are actually the best kind of stories that actually relate. But anyway, this was in New England, um, uh, an upscale boarding school called Phillips Exeter Academy. Uh, really quite And so anyway, um, chapel was mandatory, the place was packed to the rafters, young men with lots of things on their minds, uh, more than likely probably not too many of them obsessing about this parable of the ten bridesmaids. Just a guess, I'm just going to say that as a guess. So anyway, the preacher got up, and he wasn't like Pastor Overly, he just went on. It was warm, and the radiators are hissing, and young men are dropping like flies in the, in the pews. And it turns out that somewhere in the back there was a young man who wasn't just drowsy, but he was actually comatose. And so with a great rhetorical flood, uh, flourish after I don't know how many minutes of, of preaching to these poor kids who never did this guy anything wrong, Finally, he raises the question, and he says to, to young men, gentlemen, where would you rather be? Here in the service in the presence of the Lord, or out in the dark with a foolish maiden? And all the boys woke up in time to say, out in the dark with a foolish maiden. Amen. A wedding. This blessed event, which was and still is to this day, more often than not, the focus of a lot of anticipation and energy and anxiety, and oftentimes a lot, a lot, a lot of cash is the setting again today. And like all of Jesus' parables, all of them, it is rooted in real life, was one of the reasons that it has such an incredible appeal, because this is pretty much how weddings happen in this place in the world and at, at that time, and my understanding is in certain places of the world, this is still kind of how it, it went down. Specifically, for our purposes this morning, invitations to weddings were very, very general. There was none of this November 15th at 4 o'clock reception to follow at the Detroit Yacht Club or the Bruce Post or wherever it is. It was more like, come to the wedding, which will happen on November 15th, and interestingly enough, it was the bridegroom, not the bride, it was the bridegroom who basically determined when things would get started. In the world in which we live, and having had just a few experiences with weddings, it, it, it's completely reversed, and it's the bride that is the focus of all the attention. Unless Unless for the bridegroom, I'm sure for uh, his mother, he is there is an aura about his head, and he shines like a star in a dark night. But uh, the truth of the matter is, most people are looking at that door and they are waiting for the bride. I've had a couple of times in my experience where uh, the organist would begin to play the wedding march, and people would stand, and the organist would make his way through. Wedding march, no bride. And there was one time he started again. Finally, the pastor left, went down the side aisle and said, Are you okay? Change of heart? What's going on here? And it wasn't a change of heart, but she was simply, and this has happened a number of times, was so overwhelmed by what was happening, she couldn't, she couldn't put one foot in front of the other. So, normally in those circumstances, by the third time, we get to the wedding march. She's able. She's able to, to make 
But in Jesus' day, it was the bridegroom who tended to be the focus of, of so much attention. So, in essence, here it is. Have your Sunday desk laid out, have your dress sandals polished, and your lamps filled with oil because the call to the bridegroom is coming on November 15th. Could be at 10.45 p.m. A lot of people got married late at night. Interesting. Maybe we should try that sometime. And, or it might be at 11.21. Or in reality, who knows? As you know, having listened just a moment ago, five are ready, five are good to go. Five are not so much. And the reason for that is, well, the same reason that Pastor Overly was late this morning. It starts with a P. It's called procrastination. I'm sure I'm the only one here who knows anything about, about that. But just to give you an example, true story, one time I noticed it is a sight, unfortunately, not all the time these days. Um, it can be a building, it can be an office. In this case, in my experience, it was a garage. It was empty. Empty. There was a heavy empty. Walk up to the garage and lean against the glass. You've done this before. And the sun is so bright that you cut your eyes to shield yourself from the sun and you look in, you look onto the floor, and there in the middle of this vacant garage that was once the focus of so much energy and activity, there is a big grease splotch in the middle of the garage floor. There are some papers strewn about. I noticed the back of the wall there was a sign. It was a joke, or I think it was meant to be a joke. And jokes sometimes can be a wonderful defense mechanism and can reveal much about our attempts to hide what has really happened. And the sign read this Don't do the day that you can put off until tomorrow. The foolish. Give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out, but the wise reply, we don't think so. But you might want to make your way across grass and carefully, please, and make your way over to Crow. And on the way, the five went, and the one said, I have a bottle of German coupon. And the other said, I also think I also have a coupon. So there they were, they got their oil, and they were in the self-checkout. And the word in your pin buttons. The bridegroom arrived. The door was shut. And it was locked. And the door was shut. It was locked. A lot of preachers, a lot, are not particularly fond of this particular take. It seems to some people so out of character for Jesus who offended the prim and the proper and the pri pri uh, pious by crossing lines that good people didn't cross, opening doors in life that were thought best left closed, embodying and enacting grace. And yet that same person who unquestionably lived his life that way and offended an awful lot of people by doing so said, and the door was shut. The parable this morning, and this isn't true in every instance, but this parable this morning is an allegory of sorts. The bridegroom is Jesus. The maidens, well, that's you and me. And the wedding is the kingdom. And the slamming of the door is the finitude of man. It is judgment. The invitation is grace. You are loved. You are and share the joy and let us fill your life, God says, with my presence. And the door was shut. In your life and in mine too. And in the life of the world to come. And this is so hard for all of us to really take in. It's hard for me to take in. But the time will surely come when all the grains of sand Hourglass with your name, your name, and mine. All of those grains will slip from the top to the bottom of the hourglass. 
An old woman, it is told, lay dying, and a well-meaning chaplain sat beside her, sharing the hope of the gospel. And summoning what little strength she had left, she opened an eye, and she looked straight at the chaplain, and she said, I have not left such things for the last hour of my life. Be prepared. If you haven't caught it, that's, that's the theme, theme, uh, theme this morning. That is the theme of it. Keep away. That is the theme of Advent, which will arrive in just a few weeks. Be prepared. Keep away. For what, you might ask? The end of the world? Yeah. Could happen at any time. Especially today, with the things that are going on in the world. Time of trial, time of crisis in your life comes to all of us. Time of grief, yep, that too. In fact, that's the point this morning when Paul writes to the Thessalonians. Paul is speaking to people who are grieving because Christians grieve too. We miss those who have died. We long for their presence. And Paul basically goes and takes this palette with these rich colors of hope and expectation from the Old Testament and he writes and paints a beautiful picture of all of us, you and me and all the people that you have loved and live in your hearts. All of us together. That's why he says, encourage one another with these words. It's never meant to be some crude doctrine which we in the Lutheran Church, the Catholic Church, mainstream churches have never subscribed to. The rapture. You know exactly what I mean. In case of the rapture, this car will be empty. We have images of cars careening off the road. Of course, you don't need the rapture for people to be careening off the road. That's just the way it is in the world. Or planes falling out of the sky because the pilots were raptured and met Jesus in, in the air. Resurrection in essence of all its elements is how God treats those who belong to him. It is your destiny. Hold on to it. Encourage each other. Be prepared. Build on the rock and not sand, and not just for difficult days, but also, and here's the other side of the coin, for moments of joy, surprise and grace, when there is a taste of eternity, so that when those moments come in your life, and they come to you, thank God, you will know, as someone once said, the worst part of being an atheist, the worst part, is when something wonderful happens in your life, if you have nothing to do with it, you have nobody to thank. You have no Because in every Christian life, Jesus comes, and sometimes in a moment like this one, and sometimes in gentle ways, sometimes in this world of confusing circumstances, Jesus says, I have something for you to do. It may be dramatic, it may be seemingly inconsequential, but you are called, you, not me, you are called to do it, to say it, to be it. And as such, the kingdom moves deeper into the so the question this morning is, is this parable of Jesus, is this a warning or is this a promise? And the answer is yes. Some of the saddest words in the world, they always regret and reap the least. Too late. Too late. The four cell phones, which really didn't come into our hands, iPhones and Androids until about 2000. This was a common occurrence that came up into a church. I can tell you that. Take this, take this to the bank. I guarantee you this happened quite often. It's 4.30 on a beautiful Saturday. The place is packed. The air is electric. The mothers have been seated. The bride is in her place. The groom and the best man, the bells are ringing, have come out and they stand here. And the organist And the bells are almost done, and the organist is about to play. 
And I stand there just for a moment. I shake my head. And then I enter the sanctuary. And each and every time, I say this to Jesus. Amen.
grateful, God. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are disheartened. We pray this morning for those who cannot speak for themselves, for those who are in any need. We remember especially those who are dealing with debilitating illness. We remember before you today Dave Garrett, Beth Wolf, Julia Minerva, Donna Lee Hall, Wendy Rick, Carolyn Dufresne, Ryan Finkel, those that we now name before you out loud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Eternal God, we rejoice and give thanks for the life of Ruth Gustafson. We thank you for her gentle ways and for her commitment to you and to this congregation that manifested itself in so many ways. Be with all who greet those who in days and months ahead will surely miss her. Grant to them the assurance that you are a God who raises the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we re remember today that this is a time of in which we honor those who have served our nation, those who have served and those who are serving even now. Help us to honor them in many, many ways, chiefly by the way in which we responsibly conduct the gift, the costly gift of freedom. Help us to never forget, and especially those veterans who bear the wounds of war, mental and physical, that we as a nation would do right by them and provide for their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Now into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. We share the peace. Now, God Almighty, if you like and truth to keep you all the days of your life, the hand of God protect you, the holy angels accompany you. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.